It'll be one to go this time by. Coming to the green, buddy. Coming to the green. Let's go get him. Go, go, go. Dig, dig, dig. Go, 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 go. Get your motor running. Head out on the highway. Is this, um, going back to the older car, how is this different from what would happen with the older car? Because wouldn't you see some guys up and down like what you're seeing at this point or are things a little bit different with this car? Well, it, it, the last year's car had the, the downforce qualities where you had to choose your setup around some of the downforce or aerodynamic changes. And so it, it was a different balance. With this here, it seems more um, engineering minded from the bump rubber technology in the front end. Uh, maybe even different front end geometry that um, some regular racers don't know where the engineering department can help. And so it just seems like uh, when, when, you, when Casey came a few weeks ago, he wasn't even on the map. And, and here he is, uh, won the last two out of three races. So it can be just that quick or that easy when you find it. Yeah, thanks. And next we're going to hear from Jorge Mendonca with FoxSports.com. Kurt, good morning. Thank you for joining our call, hey. and thank you for sharing your experiences with FoxSports.com this year. Oh, no problem at all. It's, uh, it's great to be part of that, and as well as uh, giving fans the insight to what's going on. Uh, there's so many interesting things and stories every week, no matter if you're winning races or if you're 21st in points. <laughs> you're going to Michigan this weekend, and obviously that's a track that holds a special spot in Roger Penske's heart. What is it like for your team heading up there this weekend? Well, it's the manufacturer's backyard, and everybody gets excited uh, to carry their nameplate uh, to Victory Lane at Michigan. And I've had the chance to do it for Dodge, and, and of course, Roger Penske's headquarters are up there. It seems like a, uh, a second home race for everybody. You, you've got Charlotte, of course, and then you've got Michigan, which are two very uh, pride-filled racetracks. And any driver that goes to Victory Lane uh, at Michigan feels that for their manufacturer, and it's, uh, it's a proud day and a proud moment for, for Dodge when we get to win there. You've been very busy the last couple of weeks. You've been doing philanthropy. You've been doing a lot of testing. Is this week sort of a relaxing week, or are you still working a lot? I've been heavy at it. Uh, we're here at the race shop. Uh, Roger Penske was here this morning, and so we had about three hours worth of meetings, uh, just trying to cover all bases and put together a plan for the next few weeks, uh, whether it's engine development, whether it's testing, uh, just trying to hit the racetrack and gather information. And finally, you were saying how if a driver can get hot, they can get hot. Is the chase still realistic for you if you can get hot? Hey, I'm waiting for when it's my turn to get hot. You know, <laughs> we want uh, something in our notebook to click and to turn our car into a top five car each week. And maybe it's just around the corner. And I, and I hope that uh, we, we have a chance to chip away at 12th place in points. Uh, we gained 70 over the last couple weeks, so that's what we need to keep doing. Thank you very much. Next, we hear from Dave Donofrio with the Concord Monitor. Hi, Kurt. Just wondering, uh, just curious about what kind of advice Sam Hornish has come at, to ask of you, you know, on his transition from open wheel to stock cars, and whether you had any theories in general as to, you know, why those guys have had a little bit of a struggle this year. Well, I mean, Sam's been a great teammate so far, and the, the information that uh, that he has from Open Wheel sometimes doesn't necessarily correlate with the stock car world, but he's a, a true champion, and he's a, a fighter, and you know that he's going to give it his best each and every week. And so the questions that he mainly has is uh, about the specific racetracks, uh, because he's, he's used to some of the uh, Open Wheel ovals or the, the street circuits that he's been on before, and nothing really compares. I mean... A driver goes to Pocono, and the first time you usually go there is in a cup car uh, if, if you're in the Sprint Cup Series. And so this past week was a big learning curve for him, but he just came off a couple hot weeks at Charlotte where he did well in the um, All-Star Race as well as um, the Coca-Cola 600. So he's done a great job progressing through the year. Any remarks from him as far as you know, NASCAR being maybe tougher competition than he was expecting or the level of competition in general? Uh, he hasn't said much about it. Um, you know, I think that he knows that this is a challenge, and all the open-wheel drivers know that, um, that, that NASCAR is pretty darn tough, and it's not just uh, 20 or 25 cars that are out there, and it's, uh, it's 43, and legitimately 30 of them have a shot at winning each and every week. 
and so the, the competition is the fiercest and uh, I think that that NASCAR is definitely being recognized as being the toughest division in all of racing. Thanks, sir. And now we'll move to Goodwin Kelly with Daytona Beach News Journal. Hey, Kurt, I'd like to know um, how fuel prices are affecting your team. Uh, like, are you taking less airplane rides? Are you renting less cars for the team? You know, anything along those lines? Um, I haven't uh, directly felt the pressure other than um, I filled up my Dodge vehicle this morning at the mobile station and that took $73 to fill it up. I'm like, you know what, I used to put a $20 bill down to fill up my Volkswagen Bug in high school. So I'm feeling it that way. It's, uh, it's almost funny to look at it and then to read in the um, papers that um, the, the oil companies are in 10 billions worth of profits. Kind of confused by it, but um, it would hit Roger Penske's pocket more than mine. And I, can't, I can tell you that we haven't done anything different. We're still trying to push hard and to win races for our great sponsors. What, what about some teams around you? Have you noticed um, you know, some teams cutting back or, or, or anything? Um, I haven't. Um, you know, it's, um, it's, it's really a, a, a tough state to be in, of course, with fuel being the price that it is. But, you know, the show must go on. And I haven't seen uh, anything different at the racetrack other than everybody's just trying to get a one-up on the competition. And one more. Um, with the uh, Coke 400 in Daytona coming up, are you, are, you, are you excited to be coming back to Daytona where you had that great finish in February? Yeah, Daytona is always great in the summertime. It's uh, it's hot, it's slick, and the track uses uh, uses you up mentally and, and physically because how different it is in July. And so, yeah, we're pumped up. We finished one two there back in February. Uh, hopefully, our setup will be fairly close when we get down there, and uh, maybe we'll have a chance to win one of these restrictor plate races. All right, thanks, man. And now we will hear from Claire Lang with XM Satellite Radio. Yeah, I'd like to note that a lot of people did ask about your brother. And my question to you is this. Did you help him get a jump start? Because really he had to be able to learn from some of your experience before he even got in the sport. We're talking driving and everything. Well, I would say that he's definitely ahead of the curve for the age that he is versus most drivers, um, even myself included. Um, when I was racing in Las Vegas, uh, legend cars or late models and whatnot, uh, I, I raced because I had to be 16 years old. Well, they passed a rule that uh, you could be 12 years old and race legend cars in the Young Lions division. So some of us drivers paved the way and, and helped change the way that drivers can get into different cars at different times. And so he started competitively racing at 12 uh, in legend cars, which was um, unheard of at the time for when I was growing up. Can you also talk about whether your car was hot this past week at Pocono? I mean, guys were falling over practically, and, uh, you know, Denny Hamlin to the infield care center, Dale Jr. was sick, uh, also Brian Vickers, you know, his words were being slurred at the end, he could hardly talk. Uh, talk about the cooling system in your car and whether you felt the car was all that hot. Well, this new car is definitely warmer than the old car. I don't know why, I don't know what adds up to it, but uh, it's, it seems like it's 15, 20 degrees warmer in there as well as you're working twice as hard. Uh, the, the car doesn't turn very well, it doesn't stick very well to the racetrack, so you're up on the wheel racing hard, and um, I saw it coming, I saw the heat coming, I got as hydrated as I could before um, days leading up to it, and so it's a tough battle. I mean, here it is, that was only really the first hot race of the year at a big racetrack with this car, so we've, we've got the Michigan next week that we haven't been to, um, Sears Point is always warm out there in Sonoma, and then um, we're going to be back at Daytona, Chicago, Indianapolis. That, that one's going to be a tough one as well. And, you know, who knows what NASCAR could do, uh, but they, they don't seem to like to listen to the drivers. Did you feel that you were about to pass out when you got out? I mean, how did you feel when you got out of your car and stood up? Uh, I felt all right. Uh, I was pumped up. We had an eighth place finish, and that carried me right into the hauler to, to get undressed and to get out of there. All right. Thank you.